So I told you chest pain is a little bit complicated. So on the USMLE, let's integrate the different presentations of chest pain, okay? Chest pain worse with palpation of the sternum and position. So, oh, it hurts when I touch myself. That's going to be costochondritis, and that's going to be a musculoskeletal chest pain. Excellent. What about chest pain that's worse on inspiration? Chest pain that's worse on inspiration, that's called pleuritic chest pain, okay? So think about pericarditis, think about a pulmonary embolism or a pneumothorax. Broken ribs, that's a high yield presentation for, ooh, it hurts when I'm taking a deep breath in. Chest pain, worse with activity and relieved by rest. Worse with activity and relieved by rest, we talked about that. That's going to be cardiac chest pain. Chest pain worse at night, remember when I'm sleeping and I had that big meal, I'm talking about GERD, okay? What about this one? Sudden severe chest pain that radiates to the back. Very acute, radiates to the back. We're thinking about something serious, aortic dissection. So watch for your hypertension patient, atherosclerotic patient, or even Marfan's patient. A young female presents with severe chest pain in the evenings. She states that they have no relation to meals. They're most severe at night. They relieve over time. However, she is worried because her 45-year-old uncle just died from an MI. Uh-oh, what's going on? So what's the likely mechanism when we're talking about Prince Mental's angina? It's coronary vasospasm. And this coronary vasospasm is going to cause this temporal myocardiac ischemia. Prince Mental angina is all related to vasospasm. So what is the likely EKG findings? It is this diffuse ST segment ele uh, elevations. How do you induce coronary vasospasms? Well, you can give a dopamine analog, and this dopamine analog can cause you to see if the coronaries themselves are predisposed to vasospasming. An NCAA athlete dies at his senior lacrosse game. He has no history of drug abuse, medication use, and has never been hospitalized. What is the likely structural abnormality which led to this presentation? You think about the athlete just, just fall down. That's going to be cardiac hypertrophy of the intraventricular septum. Ventricular fibrillation is going to be the likely cause of this death, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of V-fib in the less than age, age 30 uh, population. So what is the most common cardiomyopathy that we see? That is going to be dilated cardiomyopathy, but watch for your athlete that falls down. We're thinking about hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. So dilated cardiomyopathy. An alcoholic presents with shortness of breath and inability to lie flat. He has crackles on exam and swollen extremities. What would be the gross pathological finding for this patient? That's going to be increased ventricular size and biventricular dilation of the chambers. Okay, increased ventricular size and dilation of the chambers. So how does this affect contractility? This affects contractility because it decreases contractility. You have this eccentric hypertrophy and you can't squeeze properly. What causes concentric hypertrophy? That's going to be hypertension, exactly. Hypertension causes concentric hypertrophy. Dilated cardiomyopathy can cause systolic dysfunction, whereas hypertension causes more of a diastolic dysfunction. 56-year-old homeless man presents to the ER with fatigue and shortness of breath. Physical exam shows edema and cardiac dilation. What vitamin is most likely to be deficient? What vitamin is most likely to be deficient here? Yeah, thiamine, exactly. Wet berry berry, okay? So dilated cardiomyopathy, edema, alcoholism, or malnutrition can cause you to be thiamine deficient. What about diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia? What do we think of here? That's going to be pellagra, or niacin, B3 deficiency. And remember that niacin is nicely derived from tryptophan. 68-year-old male with difficulty swallowing solids for two months. He has a history of dilated cardiomyopathy. X-rays of the esophagus with barium contrast shows indentation and posterior displacement of the esophagus. So something structurally is going on that's messing with the esophagus. Enlargement of what anatomic structure caused the dysphagia? And this is very important for you to know, right? Because you need to know that the left atrium is going to be the most posterior structure and the left atrium can cause you to have um, uh, compression of the esophagus. Okay, so patients with mitral valve uh, stenosis and dilation of the left atrium can have this dysphagia secondary to esophageal compression. 65 year old male came from Brazil. He has an eight month history of shortness of breath and fatigue along with edema of the lower extremities. Chest x-ray shows cardiomegaly. 
endomyocardial biopsy specimen shows myofibro necrosis with a mixed inflammatory infiltrate of neutrophils, lymphocytes, macrophages, and eosinophils. When we're talking about eosinophils, we need to clue in on parasitic organisms, right? What is the causal organism here? That's going to be T. cruzi, and T. cruzi can cause dilated heart failure. Okay? The transmission is via the reduvid bug, and the gross pathology here is cardiomegaly with apical atrophy. What is the unique characteristic of myocardial cell structure? Unique characteristic of myocardial cell structure, we have intercalated discs, and that's a histological phenomena with, related to uh, cardiac muscle. So what are the components of the intercalated discs? The intercalated discs have desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, as well as gap junctions. And these gap junctions are really important because they function in providing a low resistance pathway and that propagates the uh, action potential so that the heart can contract as a conjugated syncytium. It's similar to smooth muscle. Cardiac muscle is going to contract in this coordinated manner due to gap junctions. History of smoking presents with increased amounts of shortness of breath and exam showing rails with pitting edema. He is noted to have low ejection fraction on echocardiography. What is the equation for EF? See how integrative we are here? We have to go back to normal physiology. So what is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction is stroke volume over end diastolic volume. So remember that stroke volume is end diastolic volume. Hey, I'm done filling minus end systolic volume. I'm done contracting. That's stroke volume. And put that over the uh, the initial, which is end diastolic volume, and you get a percentage. So what are the three factors that are going to be related to stroke volume? I like to remember SV cap, which is contractility, afterload, and preload. Contractility, afterload, and preload are the three components of stroke volume. So what is the physical exam difference between right heart failure and left heart failure? Remember that right heart failure is going to have clear lung sounds and nutmeg liver representing the fact that things are backing up from the right side. Congenital heart, or, uh, CHF, which is congestive heart failure, can have an S3 gallop, which is going to function in, uh, which can cause a functional mitral regurgitation. So what is the mechanism behind the edema in the legs and edema in the lungs when we're talking about heart failure? Increased amounts of hydrostatic pressure, okay? This increased amounts of hydrostatic pressure causes a lot of plasma to come out and cause you to have this edema, okay? Mortality reducing medications in congestive heart failure, let me just simplify it for you. Anything that affects the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system decreases mortality in congestive heart failure. So what are they? That is going to be the adrenergic blocker, beta, uh, which are beta blockers, the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system blockers, which are going to be ACE inhibitors, ARBs, aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone. So what is the most common um, what is the mechanism of action of the medication that reduces hospitalizations but doesn't reduce mortality? Digoxin reduces hospitalizations, however, it does not reduce mortality. And what does digoxin do? It inhibits directly the sodium potassium pump and indirectly inhibits the sodium and calcium exchanger. Okay? So, how does a patient on the USMLE present with digoxin overdose? Nausea, vomiting, altered mental status, visual disturbances, these are all going to be related to digoxin overdose. And the mechanism of action of the medication that reduces the symptoms is going to be furosemide. So furosemide reduces the symptoms of congestive heart failure, okay? Furosemide reduces the edema that you have in the lungs as well as in your uh, extremities. So diuretics are going to cause what acid base disturbance? What do, what do all diuretics cause ex ex except things like spironolactone? They all cause hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. Hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. And the reason why, guys, is because activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Renin angiotensin aldosterone system brings sodium in, and what does it do? It makes you pee out potassium and hydrogen ions. And so when you give a diuretic, you're activating the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and you're peeing out that H+. A young female presents with shortness of breath and on exam hepatomegaly. Her lung exam is clear. She is found to have elevated pulmonary artery pressures. What is the likely gene mutation that may be, rela come, uh, that may be related here? 
that's going to be BMPR2. And this is really important presentation of primary pulmonary hypertension. A young female who presents with right heart failure, think about the lungs that are messing up. So this loss of gene causes um, unproliferative vascular smooth muscle growth and increased amounts of right ventricular afterload. What is the micropathology for hokum? When we're talking about hokum, what are we thinking about? We're th talking about myofiber disarray. That's going to be a key buzzword for hokum. The genetic mutation behind hokum is going to be what? Cardiac sarcomere proteins are going to be messed up, and specifically the beta myosin heavy chain. This causes diastolic dysfunction and mitral valve regurgitation secondary to this anterior motion of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And the characteristic thing in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is that it is going to cause a diastolic heart failure, which causes you to have high end diastolic pressures. So what physical exam maneuvers, and we talked about this when we were talking about mitral valve prolapse, causes increased intensity of hokum. Hokum increases in intensity when there's less blood in the heart. So what are things that standing as well as valsalva? 